In this presentation, we're going to talk about the different types of zoning systems that are possible with air conditioning. Now, zoning basically allows me to have different thermostats in different areas in a conditioned space. For example, in a ranch-style house, I may want to have one furnace or air conditioning system, but I want to be able to control individually control different parts of the house with its own thermostat. So I have to be able to, based on the thermostat, I have to call for heat or cool and also push the air to the right section of the ductwork for those different settings. That's the purpose of a zoning system. Okay. Now, there are different manufacturers that make control systems for the installations required for zoning. They differ in the number of zones they can handle, the different types of application, method of control, and types of adjustments. The types of system generally fall into two categories, basic systems and advanced systems. The basic control system is usually limited to a maximum of four zones, single stage, heating and cooling, and two position damper control. In other words, the damper is either open or closed. They require either bypassing or dumping to control the air pressure. The systems are designed to work with the standard off-the-shelf thermostats. Okay, wiring for these thermostats is usually letter for letter, R to R, G for G, and so on. The emphasis of these, one of the thermostats is considered a master, and the system selection is determined by its system setting. In other words, is the system going to be a heat in heating or cooling? Is it fan on or fan auto? And it's determined by the master thermostat. The system will cycle on by any of the thermostats, but only the master determines whether or not the system is in a heating or cooling mode. Companies offering these basic types of zoning panels also offer systems with more features, such as two-stage heating and cooling, dual fuel heat pump integration. Okay, these systems still use their traditional 24-volt thermostats and two-position dampers and bypass air, but they do have the ability to work with more efficient staged heating and cooling equipment. Now, then we have the advanced zoning. Some zoning systems require a high level of technology to achieve enhanced performance and comfort. Typically, these systems take advantage of equipment with variable speed blower motors, modulating damper control, and staged capacity heating and cooling. Normally, the controls are proprietary. They're not common over-the-counter controls. The temperature is typically measured using thermistor sensors. An example of this is the UltraZone EWC ST3E zone control panel. Okay, now every manufacturer makes panels similar to this, but this system is a basic zone control system. The system is designed to work with standard heating and air conditioning equipment. It's either mechanical or non-power robbing electric, electronic thermostats can be used. A single control is capable of controlling two or three zone system. If greater, Number of zones are required. It, the controls can be interconnected for additional controls. A thermostat and a damper is required for each zone. The zone dampers are controlled by the zone control panels and operate in two positions, full open or full closed. There's no midway on these. The zone thermostat sends a signal to the zone control and controls their respective dampers. This is an example of the ultra zone. Over on the right-hand side, we have our damper connections and our system connection. And on the left-hand side, we have our thermostat connections, usually as a switch whether or not that's enabled or disabled. How does it work? Easy. Zone 1 thermostat determines whether or not the system is operating heating, cooling, or is off. The Zone 1 thermostat must have an O terminal that is energized in cooling and a B terminal that's energized in heating. That's the difference between the O and B terminal. The O terminal is always energized in cooling. The B terminal is energized in heating. Don't get the two confused. These signals tell the zone control whether or not the system will operate in heating or cooling. There's either six wires connected to the panel by the zone one thermostat or seven wires if the thermostat requires a common terminal connection. So think about that when you're doing your wire sizing for a new installation. All other zone control Thermostats can be simple three or four wired thermostats. And it shows you the wiring diagram is here. 
Zone 1 thermostat has all of our wires connected. Zone 2 and Zone 3 can be the simple thermostats. Does can have a C terminal for digital thermostats that require a common. The Swiss system switching from the heating to cooling is provided through the Zone 1 thermostat. The thermostat is usually placed in the zone that has the greatest usage. In residential applications, the living room is usually the location. The zone panel will respond to call from any thermostat, provided the call is in the same mode, heating or cooling, that the Zone ther 1 thermostat is in. If the Zone 1 thermostat is in cooling mode, call for heat from any other thermostat will have no effect. When any zones call, the damper opens for that zone and the zones not calling close. When all zones are satisfied, all dampers go to a fully open position and the system shuts down. This action permits the fan to dissipate any residual heat that may left be left in the furnace and allows fan-only operation. Now, advanced communicating zone systems an example of this is the carrier infinity zone system. The infinity zone system consists of several components. It has the zone control, which is the user interface, smart dampers, damper control modules, variable speed furnace or fan coil. It has a two-stage air conditioner or heat pump and infinity package products. The component continually communicates with each other via four-wire connection called the ABCD bus. Commands, operating conditions, and other data are passed continually between the components over the bus. In other words, it's always communicating. Every part of the system is talking to each other. This communication allows for more intelligent system control. An example of this, the infinity control knows when real-time airflow through each zone because the blower communicates this information back to the control. The infinity zone control is the component that would normally be the thermostat. The user interface that mounts to the wall of the system is the zone controller. Its job is to operate the dampers based on commands from the infinity controller. Okay, this is an example of the infinity user interface. The user interface also acts as a programmable thermostat. In a standard setup, the controller is used to program all the zones and enter the temperature settings for all zones. The temperature sensors that have no user interface are used in those zones. Smart sensors are used in the place of a regular therm sensor, which allows the customer the ability to change the temperature setting for a zone at the zone sensor rather than just at the controller. Different methods of installation. Okay, this is, an, this is the infinity zone control wire diagram. Again, pretty easy, okay? You have your A, B, C, D connections up here. Okay, we can have the different zone sensors. This control has up to four. You have your zone dampers, open. You have your open terminal, common, and close. There's always a fuse in these controls, and you have a dip switch that controls overall operation. This is an example of the Fini control board. Okay, again, very solid state components, but it, all your wiring is done over on these terminal blocks using a little thermostat screwdriver. The indoor unit, outdoor unit, zone control, and damper control are all connected with the four wires of the ABCD bus. The sensors are connected with two wires and the damper motors with three wires. All infinity furnaces or fan coils are variable speed and multi-stage. The system controls the fan speed and the system capacity to be at meet, match the demand of the house or space. Bypassing air is not required because, again, the fan speed will be decreased the lower the number of zones calling. The system can be used to control furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, or dual fuel heat pumps. New installations do not require jumpers or programming because the system will configure itself and recognize all of the components on the initial startup. After the initial startup, the system will locate all communicating components. It will then open all dampers and perform a static pressure check. This check could take about one and a half minutes to complete. When the check is complete, a screen will appear displaying the static pressures across the equipment at the highest delivered airflow. 
If the static pressure is above one inch water column, a warning will appear. That's because in normal systems, we do not want static pressures above one inch water column. So you'll have to track down the problem. After the static test, the control will perform a duct assessment. The duct assessment will measure the relative size of the ductwork up to and through the dampers. These measurements are used to control the correct amount of airflow in each zone system. The process takes approximately one minute per zone. The duct assessment will override a call for heating or cooling, and it will occur automatically each day at a user selectable time. The default is set for 1 p.m. During the duct assessment, the system will first open all zones and drive the blower to 175 CFN per ton of cooling, okay, or the minimum indoor unit's airflow, whichever is greater. It will then take a static pressure measurement on all ducts. In other words, every single duct has a static pressure sensor in it. The system will then close all zones and open one zone at a time, taking a static pressure measurement for each zone. The system will then all close all zones and take a pressure measurement, getting the value for duct leakage up to and through the dampers. With the static pressure measurements, the system will calculate the relative size of each zone, as well as the percentage leakage through the dampers. At the end of the process, the display will show the relative size of each zone. In other words, what the system is doing is making sure the duct work is good. The zone controller is collecting real-time data while the system is operating, making decisions about the system and about how it's going to run the system off of that data. The Infinity system also has the ability to tell if a filter is blocked based on the data received by the blower fan. It can respond to the demands for dehumidification by reducing the fan speed and increasing the latent heat capacity of the evaporator. The Infinity Control displays a system fault history, which allows the technician to see the faults when diagnosing a system issue. One of the newest types of zone controls uses wireless communications. No control wires are needed for the thermostats, zone panels, and dampers. The zone panel does not require power to operate and is wired to the control system of the air conditioning equipment. All the sensors are still wired as well. The zone system dampers require wired power to operate, but control, no control wires are needed.